So finally, I got familiar with the instructions for the E520S drone, and I can say that the instructions now are much better. Just look at this. Finally, they have included actually this combination of uh, buttons in the instructions. This is what was causing problems to many users of the E58 drone. People didn't know how to launch the engines on the drone, and they thought that only with automatic takeoff you could actually fly the drone. And the automatic takeoff was very chaotic and uncontrollable. And uh, in the end, uh, this is included in the instructions. This combination of buttons works both for E58 and for E520S. And using these buttons you turn on the engines and using the altitude stick you fly the drone up. Another good thing that I noticed, remember I was saying that E520S drone has this lights indicator and um, in the end it turns out that these lights indicate the battery on the remote control. A good thing also that this remote control now starts beeping when the battery on the drone goes low. So if your drone is far away from you, you don't have to look at the light indicators like it was in E58 model. In E58 model, when the battery goes down, you don't have any indication on the remote control for that drone. You would have to check the lights on the drone. So if you flew, flew the drone too far away from you, especially during the daylight, it wouldn't be possible for you to see whether the drone is running low on battery. And here's an example of what happens when uh, the drone runs low on batteries. The remote control will let me know, it will start beeping. And this is the indicator for the battery on the remote control. So it starts beeping and the lights are also flashing now. And even if you don't see the lights, you can understand from your remote control that you need to bring the drone back before it falls somewhere. Now let's come to calibration. E58 drone had gyroscope factory calibration and the manual calibration. E520S has gyroscope calibration, compass calibration and GPS control. And so, thanks to GPS, the drone stays in one place. If there is no GPS signal available, the drone still drifts, but it drifts less than E58. And also, the fact that this drone is much bigger uh, than E58 makes it drift slower and easier to control. E58 is a small drone, it tends to perform more sharp movements in the air and it makes more difficult to control. Also, the instructions for this E520S drone says now clearly that before each flight you need to perform factory gyroscope calibration, which was not the case for E58. The instructions didn't state that, but uh, in my experiments it turned out that you should always do factory gyroscope calibration before flying the E58 drone as well. There are some problems with the instructions about how to do compass calibration. It says that you need to turn the uh, drone while in vertical position like this and then turn it uh, like this and uh, do some other rotation. And according to instructions, you may not understand it correctly and be confused whether to perform this kind of action or this kind of action. Uh, so. Uh, the compass calibration will be discussed in the next videos and now I would like to show you how uh, you can still fly both drones without GPS signal and how they behave in the air or using the factory gyroscope calibration and uh, the pros and cons of having and not having manual calibration on the drone.